When we think of anxiety, we often imagine an annoying or scary entity that is out to get us and make us miserable. We demonize anxiety and we want to make it go away. But what if anxiety has our best interest at heart and is trying to protect us from harm? It may be annoying, but it becomes overwhelming only when we let it get out of control. This is why we think it's important to reveal the true nature of anxiety. When we understand anxiety and why it is a permanent impulse within us, we can better empathize with ourselves and manage it effectively. As we grow into adulthood, events that induce anxiety are inevitable, particularly events that involve drastic change like stepping into a new phase of life, ending a deep relationship, or moving to a new town. In Inside Out 2, these events induce anxiety at five levels. Uh, this video contains spoilers for Inside Out 2, be warned. Level one. Anxiety creeps in usually when we are in unfamiliar situations or transitions in life. For example, in Inside Out 2, Riley gets anxious about the new apartment, the fear that things will never be the same again, impressing the coach and being part of the Firehawks. In this new setting, Riley's lack of social confidence outside her friend group and being her parents' baby girl comes to the surface. In this level of anxiety, the situation triggering us hasn't escalated beyond our control, though we may feel somewhat uneasy or antsy due to its unfamiliarity. The primary challenge is not necessarily anxiety, but our unfamiliarity with the events rapidly unfolding beyond our control. Can you relate to this? Like and share and drop a comment below. Level two. As we start seeing these situations become more permanent, we realize that we can't rely on our previous sense of self because what we once knew or held onto has become irrelevant. This elevates the anxiety from discomfort in new situations to self-doubt, which only enables anxiety to be more destructive. For example, in Inside Out 2, Riley's anxiety in social situations stems from fear of future changes, thus causing her to obsessively attempt to control the present to craft her desired future. According to life coach and founder of Fearless Living, Rhonda Britton, a major cause of self-doubt is the fear of change. When we are scared of what could happen, there is a tendency to overreact in a way that causes something much worse to happen. Level three. At this stage, anxiety drives us to obsessively try to control everything to create the outcome we want. When we fail to let certain scenarios play out naturally and trust we will be fine regardless, our anxiety takes over our imagination. This obsessive control stems from heightened activity in the prefrontal cortex in our brains, intensifying overthinking during the day and causing insomnia at night, as depicted in Inside Out 2. Rather than enjoying restful nights, anxiety hijacks Riley's imagination flooding her mind with worries about social acceptance and whether she performed well to impress her coach, causing her to act unlike herself. At this level, we begin to do things out of character, to calm our wild thoughts. Think of anxiety like a fire. You need to put it out with water or a fire extinguisher. If you let the what ifs and if onlys take over, you're just adding fuel to the flames. To counteract this, Practicing mindful meditation and cognitive restructuring can promote mental clarity and help us feel more in control. Level four, when the flames persist, anxiety starts to mess with your sense of self. You may once have believed you were a good person, but anxiety makes you question that. You start to spiral into negative thinking and constantly question whether you're good enough, how others perceive you, and whether you'll be accepted by others. If being cruel achieves what you want out of fear, you might blur the lines between kindness and cruelty, not caring who gets hurt. For instance, Riley abandoned her old friends out of fear of being lonely after they changed schools. Also, her survival instincts for a social company kicked in, causing her to play hockey in a risky way, hurting others and becoming selfish. According to Healthy Place, anxiety can make you say mean things, worse, it can make you do meaner things. Level five. 
At this level, anxiety is not just an emotion, but a physical experience that paralyzes you from being functional in moderate or severe capacities. These episodes involve a surge of adrenaline and heightened sympathetic nervous system activity, triggering symptoms like panic attacks, muscle twitching, sweating, rapid heartbeat, and shortness of breath. When it gets to this level, it is crucial to make conscious efforts to drive your anxiety and not let it drive us. Because when you're led by anxiety over temporary situations, it mostly ends in permanent destructive consequences. Overcoming anxiety. So how do you keep your anxiety in check while still listening to it? Well, like Riley, you can start by acknowledging its existence. When you accept your anxiety or any other negative emotion, then you can practice regular self-reflections and self-compassion by emotion journaling and mindful breathing. Other potent methods include seeking professional counsel, confiding your struggles to someone who loves you, expressing gratitude for the little things, and building self-esteem through positive affirmations. For example, in the middle of rapid, daunting situations, you can say, I admit this change is scary, but I will not let it define me. Reassuring words like these subconsciously build confidence in any situation and a healthier self-image. Every level of anxiety can lead to a reality much worse, yet each level is an opportunity to learn new layers of yourself, strengthen the important relationships with your loved ones, and engage in self-care activities. By doing this, you will overcome anxiety at any level, navigate life's challenges with more kindness towards yourself, and most importantly, remember, in the end, you are only human. Do you wanna learn about toxic positivity? Watch this video.